let us pray our gracious heavenly father we thank you for this wonderful morning we thank you for its coolness we thank you for the time that you have set aside and sanctified for the ministry of the word as we celebrate our mission festival help us to shine as lights in darkness and live as truths that liberates everyone in the name of our lord jesus christ during the early years of my ministry i visited the kanchipuram collectorate to get some documents for the church to retrieve as church property from uh, illegal occupation after going through certain desks we were directed to a room in which we found behind a desk full of files a middle aged person wearing a checked shirt thick framed glasses and kum 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 in his forehead sitting there he was very courteous in receiving us and was obliging and told us to go to a certain office and said to us go until that annadurai had sent you you will get the documents and so before leaving we thanked him for his kind help and this person keeping both of his hands on his chest like this said sir i am obligated after getting those documents the next week we came back to kanchipuram collectorate for another work and we wanted to meet him and uh, thank him for helping us to get the documents and when we thanked him he again made the same gesture and said sir i am obligated wondering how this kumkum smeared middle aged government official could be obligated to a csi pastor i asked him why he is so obligated and he said sir i am a student of the csi anderson school here in kanchipuram if it were for if it were not for this mission school another is nobody today today we are celebrating mission sunday the theme is truth will set you free our lord jesus christ commanded us to proclaim the gospel at the end of his earthly life in gospel of matthew matthew also shows us that at the beginning of his ministry he traveled to the frontiers to the people who were sitting in darkness and under the shadow of death to become light of god to those people we can understand what mr anodore meant only if we know how anderson school in kanchipuram brought light to those who were denied the light of education john anderson the pioneering church of scotland missionary started that school and it was a runaway success students began to flock the school and uh, months after months the student ratio was rising noticing that one particular community is not bringing their children for education anderson stepped forward and encouraged them and brought two students from this untouchable community to come and get admitted immediately all the children from the dominant caste were withdrawn from the school the existence of the school was threatened john anderson that day resolved that if a tall church of scotland mission wants to do a mission here you should be for the people who are sitting in darkness and education will be for all without the discrimination of caste and uh, caste discrimination and that became the policy of all the christian mission all over india due to this mr anadore ever felt obligated to the christian church until today Anderson School is functioning in Kanchipuram and Mr Richard Samuel had served that historical school 
The World Council of Churches, the apex body of the reformed Protestant Christians, declares, and I quote, mission is both part of church's essence and the basic task of the church. And it continues to say, mission of a church cannot lose its two basic elements, procl proclamation to diaconia, that is social responsibility. Mission of a church cannot lose its two basic elements, proclamation and diaconia, that is social responsibility. The missionaries who were sent to India thought they were coming into a land of many deities and uh, festivals and temples. They were even learning Sanskrit to preach on their voyage. After landing here, only after years, they were able to understand that there were a large segment of population who are outside the pale of mainstream Indian religion. These outcasts, untouchable people, were denied entry into the temples. They were not allowed to participate in uh, temple festivals. They were not allowed to become literate. Basic health and hygiene was denied to them and um, owning any property was forbidden. Large segments of population in India was living under darkness, under the shadow of death. Like Jesus, the missionaries resolved to become light to the people living in darkness. And the results were institutions like CSI Anderson School in Kanjivaram and many uh, mission hospitals all over India. Missionaries not only built churches, schools and colleges, training schools and hospitals, they were equal in number, if not more. They did not big, big, build the big cathedrals, but colleges and institutions were bigger than many of the churches that they built. They understood that the proclamation and the social services are the inseparable two sides of the same coin, the gospel of Christ. Proclamation and social service are the inseparable two sides of the same coin that is the gospel of Christ. Even today, we can see school come churches in all the villages, especially in Dalit colonies. The truth is preached on Sunday and the school sets the children free from the bondage of the darkness of illiteracy during the rest of the days. In the northern Tamil Nadu districts and in some swaths of uh, midwestern Tamil Nadu districts, Methodist, Wesleyan Methodist missionaries sent their missionaries. And also Church of Scotland mission sent its missionaries. And when they came and saw that people here are sitting under the darkness and under the shadow of death, they scaffolded their proclamation with the mission of education, health and hygiene, and they started many training schools to give skills to both men and women. And this liberated many from the evil of bonded labor system. Hundreds converted to Christianity with one condition that their children have to be educated. And that is the result of so many school come churches in Dalit colonies all over uh, Tamil Nadu. It can be seen all over India. When American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Mission sent their missionaries, they went to the mid-districts of Tamil Nadu. And they were astonished to see a particular tribes of people branded as criminal tribes and they were hunted down like animals by the colonial police. The first task is to plead for their human rights and that they may be allowed to live in peace. Liberated by truth, hundreds became Christians and their social transformation inspired the government later to denotify them. They were liberated by truth. The Congregational Church in England also was inspired to send missionaries and they formed the London Missionary Society and they went, then they sent their missionaries. Missionaries were required 
at the southernmost tip of the South India and they were sent to the Travangore Kingdom. And they were shocked to see that lower caste people there were not allowed to wear clothes above their waists, even women. And the missionaries made the lower caste women first to clothe themselves. And these lower caste women were attacked in the marketplace called Iraniel and they were stripped during the broad daylight, sparking a revolt which is called the Upper Cloth Revolt. The LMS missionaries were instrumental in bringing a legislation giving right for the lower castes to clothe themselves in a dignified way. The truth set them free. There was a mass conversion to Christianity. The Australian Presbyterian Mission was inspired to send missionaries and especially the women of uh, the, the Australian Presbyterian Church wanted to send a women missionary. And they were, when they were sent, they were staying in Vapori area. And they were allotted the western districts like Thiruthani and Scholinger to go and minister unto them. And when they went to Scholinger and Thiruthani area, they, were, they found girls living under the darkness of childhood marriages. These little girls who were married in childhood became widow very early in their lives, even before attaining teenage and lifelong widowhood under stringent social restrictions. And the Australian Presbyterian women missionaries politically lobbied to ban child marriages. And the girls were not allowed to go to school. And so they went to them, their houses and they began Zanana Mission. Zanana is a place of separation for the women in a household. And they went there and taught the girls in the privacy of their homes. And that resulted in the numerous girls' school that we have uh, all over India. Now, one of the uh, nearest witnesses of the Zanana Mission's development is the Ewars School in our neighborhood, which started as a Zanana Mission School. The American Arcot Mission sent their missionaries from Arka to Velur and Ranipet areas. And uh, when they went there, they were dismayed to see that people did not have good medical attention, especially women did not get specialized medical attention. And they envisioned a yes, sustained medical mission work to enable the native women to become medical missionaries. And that resulted in Christian Medical College and its hospital which is serving the masses today. Dearly beloved in the Lord, James says in chapter 2 verse 14, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works. Mission festival is a time when we are called to commit ourselves once again to our mission legacy which has brought us our forefathers to Christ. The word and deed equally. Proclamation and diaconia. The social service. We are committed to proclaim the word of Christ because our Lord has commanded, we are also challenged by the history of the mission to live like Jesus, to bring light into the lives who are still sitting in darkness under the shadow of death. Proclamation and social service are the inseparable two sides of the same coin, the gospel of Christ. May God help us to proclaim the word and bring light through our deeds.